Just a couple of hours ago, President Obama departed the White House for a nine-day trip to Asia. He'll be meeting with leaders in Japan, Singapore, China, and South Korea. The spotlight will be on the president's stops in Shanghai and Beijing, where trade, the yuan, and carbon emissions loom large. Here to help sort through some of these issues is Dr. Kenneth Lieberthal, director of the John L. Thornton China Center at the Brookings Institution. He joins us from Washington. Dr. Lieberthal, welcome to Bloomberg News. Thank you. Good to be with you. Sir, any major policy decisions or changes coming out of this trip, or is it just a formality? I know. I think the trip is very far from just a formality. Uh, in terms of very concrete decisions, I think the news is likely to be primarily in clean energy cooperation between the U.S. and China. Uh, the two presidents, at least at this point, plan to issue a joint statement at the end of the pre uh, President Obama's uh, visit to Beijing. And I think in that joint statement, we're likely to see the unveiling of a number of initiatives in the clean energy area. Of such uh, as? Otherwise, I, uh, I think uh, in terms of joint research laboratories, uh, cooperation on carbon capture and sequestration, cooperation on electric vehicle development, and other areas. Frankly, this is still being discussed right now. So the, the, the specifics I'm giving you are tentative. Uh, there are likely to be things I'm not aware of yet, and some of these things may uh, fall by the wayside. Uh, but I think that we will see some real progress in that area coming out of this trip. Well, President Hu's been on the world stage for a while. Uh, President Obama, comparatively speaking, is, is the junior leader here. How do you think they'll get along? Uh, they've actually dealt with each other a fair amount already this year. They uh, met in uh, London in April. They met in Pittsburgh. They met in New York. Uh, they deal with each other on the phone. Uh, I think they've established a reasonable amount of rapport to this point. What, what's different here, clearly, is this is President Hu's home turf. This will be a state visit. Is really President Obama introducing himself personally to the Chinese people, and I suspect he'll do quite well with that, but we'll have to see how it comes out. Of course, a lot of tension recently on trade and trade imbalances. Do you realistically expect any improvement on that front to come from this summit? Uh, not anything very serious, frankly. We're in constant communication with the Chinese on trade-related issues. Each of us worries about protecting the sentiment in the other country and uh, various kinds of measures that each side has been taking around the margins. I think neither one wants to see uh, protectionism grow very much. Uh, but this is a matter of ongoing management of a very well-recognized problem. I don't think we're going to see major breakthroughs during the course of this summit. And on the yuan, our earlier guest uh, mentioned that seeing some appreciation in the yuan. Is that going to come up? It will certainly come up. Uh, I don't think it will come about for a while yet. The Chinese have just signaled in a somewhat oblique way that they're uh, considering moving back toward the kind of language that they used the last time that they allowed the uh, yuan to appreciate vis-a-vis uh, -vis the U.S. dollar. Uh, they stopped that appreciation uh, back a little over a year ago now. And I think that they sense it's, a, it's time to move back to a more flexible posture. I would guess that we will begin to see appreciation in probably uh, January or so or maybe a little later. I think they'll keep a very tight ring on it. Uh, but I would expect during the course of 2010 to see the renminbi float up somewhat vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. dollar. Uh, Dr. Lieberthal, how, how tough will both men be when they're talking about currency? The Chinese obviously have some concerns about the U.S. dollar. Uh, President Obama with some concerns about the Chinese currency as well. Is the word manipulation going to come up at some point, or do they kind of tap dance around that? Well, I don't think it's so much a matter of tap dancing around it. The word manipulation has a technical meaning in U.S. law where the Chinese would keep shifting the value of the renminbi in order to gain temporary trade advantage. Uh, the reality is China doesn't shift the value of the renminbi. It basically pegs it to the U.S. dollar. So, for example, when the dollar strengthened uh, late last fall and through the winter with you know, kind of flight to safety uh, among investors around the world, uh, the Chinese did not change the exchange rate to the dollar. The right. renminbi floated up with the dollar. It's now floating down with the dollar. Yeah. So I don't think the issue is manipulation. The issue is what is the ratio that the Chinese are going to maintain vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, and is that going to shift in a predictable way over time? And finally, what do you expect will be on the president's agenda for his time also in Korea, Japan, and Singapore? Uh, I think uh, there are particular issues in each place, but there's a fundamental theme that we're going to see everywhere. 
And that theme is that the United States is going to be deeply engaged in Asia during the Obama administration. Our officials are going to be showing up there all the time for meetings, et cetera. We're going to pay attention to Asian regional issues, right. not just to Asia's role in the global fight on terror. And we're there to listen as well as to talk. And so I think it's a reassertion of a major American presence in the region and a strong diplomatic offensive. Dr. Kenneth Lieberthal, director of the John L. Thornton China Center at the Brookings Institution, joining us from Washington. Dr. Lieberthal, thanks.